watch a movie, Paul watch a movie, then we review it. Hey, what did you think? And this is a show and it's called Coolflix. It can be your new favorite show. Coolflix. Movies and more. I try. Season one, reboot. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump isn't president anymore, so now it's safe. So we're safe. We're safe. We can come out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if, if our Argent, fan, Argent fans have noticed, but we haven't been uploading videos on our channel lately uh, since 2006 and 17. Taking a little bit of a hiatus. Oh, everybody does it. Everybody has to take a break. The pressure was getting really high. Okay. Yeah. We got caught up in politics, internal politics, external politics, uh, a lot of politics. But I got a new sweater, so I got almost completely I got completely arrested and beaten and abused and humiliated the whole time uh, since we were gone. But I'm back and I'm excited. So anyway, first movie we're gonna talk about uh, is called Lamora. 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 A child's tale. Supernatural. Story. Child's and supernatural tale of. The movie begins with a beautiful uh, uh, aria sung by. Pristine, perfect white woman, young girl who's she's beautiful and blonde, and she's singing in a church. She represents purity. I can already tell just by turning on the movie. And then uh, I, I, I skipped the really good intro. There's a really exciting intro. I thought the intro was good. It starts very mysteriously. This gangster, he walks in on his wife fucking some guy, and shoots him, bam, blasts him away. Uh, 1920s gangster, and then he gets in his car and just runs over grandma. <laughs> Immediately runs over grandma and then like drives somewhere and gets out and <laughs> is confronted by a, a vampire lady. A woman in all black, very yeah. scary. Immediately opens fire the gun down. Down. Right away, only thing he knows to do. <laughs> his, only, his only move. He's a video game character. In the 20s, you could be a gangster just by shooting a Tommy gun. But she's immune to bullets and her thugs bash him and take his wallet and uh, kidnap him. She writes a letter on the back of, uh, I guess, a piece of newspaper that her father had. Yeah, saying how famous he is. She writes a letter tricking the girl into coming out because she says, your father is very sick and he, he wants to see you. his deathbed. He wants to see you one last time and repent for his, for his dastardly ways. Yes. And she's like, oh, okay. The letter also <laughs> says, don't tell nobody. Don't and tell anybody. You come you, right now. If you, come, if you don't come alone, you don't get to see your dying father. But anyway, there's another plot thread where she lives with a pastor because yeah. he took her in. Everybody in this movie, besides the main character, is a horny, uh, Monster, disgusting yeah. lech. <laughs> So every person she encounters is like, hey, little girl. <laughs> Everyone from like the baker to the fucking guy at the train station. Yeah, every everybody, single person. Every man that she meets and the women, though they don't talk about her, are also like this. They're just like, yeah, you know, they just love it. <laughs> <laughs> so she stows away in this car to get a ride to the train depot. After she, she walks out the street, she needs a ride to go to, to see her dad. She has to take a special train. Yeah, a special uh, bus. A special is, trolley, yeah, yeah, bus. The night bus. And then... Uh, she stills away in the backseat of the car with this guy because the guy refused to drive her with him. He's like, I got taxi service. Hurry up before I change my mind. Just the creepiest. Okay, so our, our, our lead, she stills away in this car to get a ride um, into town to go to the train. Right, to the, to the bus. To the bus. Right. Depot. The bus depot, sorry. That's she right. goes to the bus depot and she meets the bus guy and he's like <laughs> standing behind the desk being pretty creepy. And then uh, she has to get on this, uh, the only bus that goes to, what's it called? Asteroid. Asteroid. Yeah, he, he, he tries to sell her a ticket, then he tries to give her some chocolates. He's like, he wants Yeah, he wants her to eat his chocolates for some reason. He's really insistent. Every on, single person. Every person is a creep towards this little girl. I guess basically the point of the movie is that. But anyway, so she gets in the, she, uh, she gets to this bus. Right. And it has the creepiest, most stereotypical, creepy driver yeah. from any movie you've ever seen. Folks, you know exactly what this is gonna be. People don't go there anymore. They're freaks! I hate driving this route. Oh, 
he does the most heavy-handed, but it's still really fun uh, uh, for setting up for this. Probably my guy. favorite performance in the movie. It's the best. It's the best. That guy was great. He's he, for some reason he reminded me of like Dave Chappelle or something, like doing like a skit. Yeah, he was being like these uh, people are freaks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand them. <laughs> what, how far is it? Too far, if you ask me. And then he even says. They have the Azteroth look. They got the Azteroth look. look. So it's obviously an Innsmouth uh, reference. Yeah. So you know we're in for a town full of monster people, and they, they park the bus. First of all, though, he's being incredibly creepy, and she yeah. doesn't notice. She doesn't care. It's like, is this guy in on it? Yeah, he's like, you better get some sleep. <laughs> he's so scary. And she's just like, okay. She goes to bed. Eh, zombie attack. Zombies, right? Yeah, and then when he, he gets out and he's like, oh, it's me. He's kind, of <laughs> he's kind of shooing them away. Like, it's not a big deal. They're just the extra freaks. And then immediately he just gets ripped apart. And he gets ripped apart, but then he, he claws his way back onto the bus to say, the break, the break. Put it in, put it in. <laughs> put it in neutral. Escape without me. Uh, so she, she uh, she's in this bus and she escapes the zombies by like moving the bus, but then she crashes into a tree. Or she gets Wait. taken into like a milk house or like it's some like kind a of stone. They call it the stone house. It's the stone just house a structure where she's sort of imprisoned in there in this little bed. Well, this old lady comes in and she's like singing some kind of song. Oh, I really like that scene. Actually. Yeah, let's see a clip of that scene. Yeah, yeah it's a fun scene. Then turn into the Martian shadow. Like that when I am dead. Oh, 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 oh. the portion to the old woman sits. What I like about that is the way she spins around here and says, You're gonna get old and die with me. And our, our hero is not disturbed by it, really. She's, yeah, she's kind of just this blank slate. Uh, she doesn't really react. But it sets the mood, and it's really good because this woman is sort of like the handmaiden to the villain that we met in the yeah. beginning. Um, I think her voice is dubbed. It's like mm -hmm. it sounds like a really bad '90s like video game or something. For a minute, I thought it was a man doing a woman's voice. But anyway, <laughs> she uh, these these creepy children are at the window laughing at her. Yeah, she tries to pray, and God responds with little creepy children. Yeah. <laughs> Praying isn't gonna help you here. Uh, she escapes out of the house. She escapes. The old lady lets her go. The girl um, runs out and she's looking around. She doesn't know what's going on. And then she finds a disturbing scene. She, her first instinct is it's in the middle of the night with creepy people everywhere. Let's crawl underneath the house. She right? hears her dad speaking and sees him sitting in a chair. And the Lamora, the woman in black from the beginning, um, is talking to him. They're having this really nice conversation about. He's like, oh, I don't want to turn on my my girl. And she's like, No, sure not to. I'm so thirsty though. And he's like, oh, take it easy. After that scene, she screams. And then uh, I think the old lady, the old lady says, her, I lost the girl. And the woman's like, you bitch. How could you do that? I, I, I thought I should, I would leave you in charge of that girl and there's no way she'd escape. It's pretty tense and fun and like the movie is shot in a pretty nice way. You can see yeah, the most Yeah, the cinematography is pretty good. Low I mean, budget, right? Super low yeah, budget. Yeah, super low budget. There's a, there's a lot of nice shots. I think there's some real, artists working behind the scenes yeah. on this one. But anyway, uh, she, she basically finally gets to meet the villain of the movie and she starts to explain what's going on. She's like, I was putting you in that house to protect you from the zombies. They're zombies and it's not my fault, but uh, little girl, you gotta just come over to my house now. I got a room for you. It's nice. So what's going on? Where's my dad? Why are there zombies? Why is everyone such a fucking creep? And she's like, ah, too many questions. You can't see your dad because he's very sick. You need to become immune to what he has before you can see him. To do that, we need to just do the ceremony. There's the ceremony. It's a simple ceremony. I don't know why you ask him so many questions. And our character, our protagonist, just stops asking questions. Uh, <laughs> don't ask questions. <laughs> yeah. Basically, she uh, meets the children again, and they do that overdubbed laughter. Yeah, it's really a creepy. feral, creepy kids. Mm -hmm. And they look at her and they're like, you have nice skin, and they have pale. Yeah, the blue. Crack. The the the. Uh, she has. Some, does she have a drink after that? Is yeah, that they see? they give her some blood. <laughs> they all sit around in a circle, and <laughs> she asks if it's wine, and they're like, yeah. not exactly. And she's like, well, I can't drink wine. It's a sin. And she's like, well, it's a sin to be rude to your host. Well, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, good, the good book. It doubles that. It doubles that. Yeah. So she drinks the goblet. 
and then she passes out. But she uh, wakes up, and uh, now it's really like a mother-daughter kind of dynamic. They're getting along, and but she's got a cross on. So that's it. So that is cross. Is, she's had this cross all around her neck the whole movie, and yeah. uh, the villain keeps looking at it. It's actually a really good storytelling. She keeps looking at it. She's obviously. She, what if I just and then every time she turns around, <laughs> she's about to grab it. What? What's that? I don't remember the exact. There's like a subplot too where she discovers like a uh, old journal of another girl from the 1800s. It's like the the same things happening to her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's getting more and more suspicious, and then all of a sudden she comes across Lamar feeding on one of the feral kids, and she gets freaked out. And Lamar is like, <gasps> what are you doing? And what do you think? she runs away, and she goes and climbs up a tree, and the bus driver shows up, and he's like, he's one of the wolf people. He's a monster. Yeah. Guy. But then her dad, uh, I guess he he kind of like wants to protect her maybe now. I don't know. And he, sort of. Him and the bus driver they start tussling, and she runs away. And then she like comes across this like car with a coffin in it. Yeah, that was inter- interesting. Yeah. Or she gets in the back, and there's just a coffin in the back seat. And her first her first instinct is, I'm just gonna get in this. I'll coffin. just get in the coffin. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> then it drives into town, and there's all these like cult people with black robes, and they got torches. There's a really cool scene where uh, uh, Lenovo Yoga 3 2 and one available now at Best Buy is talking to her and trying to seduce her to be a vampire. And you don't see her, you don't see the villain, you just see her torch that she's holding. Oh yeah. And it cuts back from just the torch to the girl talking, I can't do this, uh, I can't be a vampire, I left my woman on. So she, <laughs> uh, we're at this ritual, it's the vampire turning, cults, all kinds of good stuff. Yeah, uh, but when she's running away with, from the people with the torch, she comes across like this lady in an ice block, and I think it's implied that that was the girl from the journal, I don't know. It's kind of just like, the movie's kind of subtle, it's, it's, you kind of gotta watch it to figure out what's going on. Yeah, it wasn't super heavy handed, and it didn't have a lot of really cringy dialogue. I think overall it was pretty well written. Um, but she she basically is uh, seduced to be a vampire, right? She turns, she decides. Yeah, the, uh, the cultists and the werewolf, feral, vampire people, they get into a fight in the church during the ceremony and then the dad tries to, the dad werewolf guy tries to protect her but then he like Starts trying to kill her, and then she like kills him, and then oh yeah, she stabs her own father. She has to yeah. gore him through the chest with a fucking stake. Now she's separated from all of her previous identity. Everything, everyone she's known is either dead or trying to molest her. So yeah, and then Lamora shows up, and she's got the ceremony rope, ceremonial robes that she had. She like showed them to her earlier, mm-hmm. and uh, then yeah, she gives in. Uh, now a shattered, broken person. There's a line where Lorado, El Dorado says, your father was so brutish and vile. That's, and that has something to do with the transformation turning him into a monster. She implies that if I do this to you, pretty girl, you have a pure heart, so you'll be a match, you'll be able to, to uh, basically be a perfect vampire or something. Basic Nietzschean theory one-on-one. Right, it gets super Nietzschean. Um, and I said that was pretty niche. Yeah. So and then right. at that point, it's you boom, you're a vampire. Like now she's a vampire. vampire. And then the pastor guy, he shows up. He shows up at the last minute. He's uh, knocked out. And then he wakes up in like a barn or whatever, just a bed. And she and he finds her. He's like, Oh, you're alive! I'm so glad I found you. Are you okay? I was so worried. Then she's like all over him. And at first he's like, No, oh, no. But then, no, oh, no. Of course. Oh, God. His true character is revealed. He does give in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody, every single man in the movie, invariably, besides the bus driver, basically, but even maybe him, wants to uh, uh, have sex with her. And then the pastor, the only one who resists his urges, even though he, he's still, he shouldn't want to anyway, <laughs> if he's a decent person. And he gets eaten. A bit of a anti, a bit of a reverse climax, right? Yeah. And then there's like a little scene with her back in the church singing, which might be a flashback, or maybe it's implied that she went back well, to the church. He was in the church in that earlier shot, but, the, but in the, the next very last shot, shot, he's not there. So I guess so, that yeah. it's not a flashback. So maybe that's interesting. Now she's. I wonder if there were any sequels to this movie. No, there wasn't. The person that directed it, this was their only directing credit. The only other thing that they're really known for was they helped write a movie called Eating Raul, which is about like a a couple and they try to get people to come to their house and then they eat them. I remember making a movie like that one time. 
Yeah, it's a good <laughs> idea for a movie. Uh, well, I, I think it's an interesting movie. It's not like especially revolutionary or game breaking. No, really nothing new at all. And it's kind of old. <laughs> the way it's presented is nice. And I would say if you need a nice horror '70s throwback movie, yeah, it's unique. It's worth watching. I didn't want to turn it off. I wanted to know what happened. It's a solid book. I kind of like the, I don't know, like, shoestring quality of it. Like, I don't think I would watch it if it wasn't for, like, the really weird performances. Like, I think it's kind of in the movie's favor that, like, the the old lady uh, servant person, that her voice is so bizarre, or, like, the bus driver is just so over the top and weird. It adds to the creepiness and, yeah. like, weird uh, jank makes it, you don't know if it's jank and low budget or if they're doing it on purpose to be creepy, so it kind of works. I feel like the first, like, two-thirds of the movie are really well paced, actually. Like, the way it reveals information, it's constantly, like, throwing new things at you. And only in maybe the last act, there's just this extended chase sequence that it kind of starts to drag a little bit. It's like, okay, they're, yeah. they're not really giving you more information, but it's really short. It kind of ties It is really short, and it, I think, it, I think it, it's like a solid, like, pretty good written film. So overall, uh, I liked it. What was our old rating system? So we went on a scale of five stars. And then did, did we average them? And then we came up with, I think we had, I had- Well, we would, you could do like half ratings. Although when we did the Godzilla review with Brandon, he gave the God, Shin Godzilla 3.7 stars, which oh, really made, ruined the- Made the match really hard to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he, that's what he thought of the movie, so. So the old rating system, we both had five stars, and then we'd average it. Okay, okay. So, we, we, so we submit stars for yeah. the movie, and then they, we get something stars. I'm gonna give this one, I need to get a little more rigid with my star ratings, because I think I tend to like things too much after I ever see them. So I'm going to give this movie a solid 3.5. Is that too low? Does that seem like a bad movie? No, that's, that's kind of what that is. Like a, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Better than average yeah. movie. Actually, that was, yeah, that's average to me. An average movie to me is like watchable, you don't want to turn it off, it's not going to cha change your life. Yeah. There's something to it that warrants it existing. Yeah. So like three is, it's like, it's good, basically. Yeah. What's, a, what's a famous three? A famous three? Thor two? <laughs> no. That's like a, <laughs> that's like a two. That's like a 2.5. Yeah, you're right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe three. Yeah. All right, something like that. Some Marvel movie that's right in the middle of quality. Right? Yeah. Because they're all kind of below four, I would say. Yeah, I would probably give this 3.5 too. I think I maybe would give it a four if like the last chunk of it was as good as the like the part before it. But like once she leaves the house, it's like the script starts to be a little bit flimsy and I don't know. But it was a fun movie and for being 50 years old, it holds up. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah. It's, I think it holds up a, a lot better than other movies from the era that are like higher budgets. Let's check out one more clip.